capacitor. Also, by the way, have you seen the previous year physics paper, board exam? Not so. I think this year. This year. You have seen? How many have you seen? Now the focus is on numericals, board exam as well. Alright, so this is the capacitor which is given and in between there is a dielectric. The width of the dielectric is D by 3. Fine? Okay? Fine? You need to find the capacitance of this. Capacitance of this. Nobody from patch 1 was able to solve this. Let's see whether one of you can. Use the basic definition. It is very basic. When I tell you how to solve it, you will be amazed that it will be solved very easily. Okay? The way we have solved the previous previous derivation, the way we have done, same way here also we have to do. Same way. Find the capacitance of this. The dielectric constant is K.
potential difference between the upper plate and the lower plate in terms of Q and Q divided by V should be your answer. That, that is the process, right? That is what we have learned. Give the charge plus Q over here, minus Q over here, there. find the potential difference between these two plates in terms of Q and Q divided by V will be the capacitance. Anyone? You got it? Okay, now I will solve it. Asha, electric field over here will be what? Over here and over there. How much it will be? Q by A epsilon naught. Yes or no? Electric field inside it directly will be what? Q divided by A K epsilon naught. Electric field will become E naught by K inside it directly. Understood? So potential difference between this point to that point is what? This distance is 2D by 3 minus X. Yes or no? So potential difference between point 1 and point 2 that is Q into 2D by 3 minus X divided by A is not. This is potential between 1 and 2. Between 2 and 3 what is the potential difference? Q divided by A K is not into d by 3 plus potential between this and that point is what? q divided by a is equal to naught into x this is the total potential difference or not? this plus this plus that any doubts? it's about to do that 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 understood? This, this is the electric field. Yeah. Electric field into distance is the potential difference. Yeah. Here to here, potential. electric field is Q by A is not that into distance. This potential difference. Electric field over here is this. That into that distance is that potential difference. Plus again, electric field over here is same. That into X is this potential difference. So this potential difference plus that potential difference plus this potential difference. This total potential difference. Got it? So X goes away. This term will get cancelled away. So you will get over here Q by Q by A epsilon naught into T. You get 2 by 3 plus plus 1 by 3K. Yes or no? This is equal to V. Okay, so Q by V becomes equal to whatever comes that side. So capacitance will be equal to epsilon naught A divided by 2 by 3 plus 1 by 3 K to D. Fine. Is there any difference between the way we have derived and the way we have solved this question? There is no difference. It is you who is making things complicated in your head. Getting it? Right? We have to follow the same process. Give the charge, find the potential difference in terms of charge and then charge divided by potential difference is the capacitance. Fine? So going forward, we will be doing the same process. Fine? And how we are finding the potential difference? It is easy to find electric field. And from electric field, we can find the potential difference. Fine? Right, shall we move to the next one? Okay, now write down the next is spherical capacitor. Spherical capacitor, not in your NCRT syllabus, but still we are doing it. It comes again and again in JEMs. Spherical and cylinder capacitor. Write down spherical capacitor. How it looks like? You have two concentric 
scales. Perfect. Fine. So you have one sphere of radius A, the other sphere of radius B. Okay. Which two surfaces make the capacitor? This one and this one. They make the spherical capacitor. Okay. So you assume that you have given plus Q charge on the outer sphere and minus on the inner one or you can assume it otherwise also inner positive and outer negative doesn't matter actually ok suppose plus Q and minus Q charges are given can you find it now can you find this uh, capacitance of this try to do this here on was a similar kind of thing we have done earlier finding potential difference do you remember when we have it was same Why you have to flip the pages? Huh? Ah. 
Okay, so let's solve it. Let's say this is surface one, this is surface two. Potential at one is what? Tell me. Minus Q is over here. So potential at one because of minus Q is what? Minus of K Q divided by A. What is the potential due to the outer one at point one? Due to the outer plus Q charge, what is the potential at point one? One is inside K Q by B. B minus A is not here. B only. Anywhere inside, the potential will be the same. If you are talking about the point inside a sphere, hollow sphere. Okay? This is V1. V2 is what? Potential over here, because of this negative charge is what? Minus KQ by B. B. And due to the positive charge at point 2, KQ by B. So this is 0. Potential of the outer sphere is 0. Okay, potential of the inner sphere is this. So potential difference is what? That only. So V2 minus V1, you can write it as KQ 1 minus A minus 1 B. If there is negative sign coming in, ignore it. Okay, it just means that you have subtracted higher potential from the lower potential. Potential difference magnitude remains that only. Okay, this is your potential difference. Let's say this is V. Okay, so uh, V by Q, sorry, Q by V, we have to write. So Q by V is equal to, uh, let's open the K, it will be 4 pi epsilon naught in the denominator. It will be 4 pi epsilon naught divided by 1 by A minus 1 by B. If this is the capacitance or the spherical capacitor. Understood? Fine. If I place a dielectric of dielectric constant K throughout, the capacitance will be 4 by K epsilon naught. Instead of epsilon naught, put K epsilon naught. That's it. Fine. And now, so we have defined the capacitance of the spherical capacitor using some symmetry. Now, can you derive it usually the way you have derived the parallel plate capacitor, finding the electric field and then integrating E dot dr and getting the potential difference and like that. Can you do it? Uh, Find the electric field. You assume a Gaussian surface of radius is small r, like this. Can you find the electric field as a function of r? How much it is equal to? So why we are doing it like this? Because that is uh, a common method which can be used for other distributions also. Finding electric field and then finding the potential. Okay. What is electric field as a function of R? Anyone? Apply Gauss law. E into 4 pi r square will become what? Minus q by epsilon naught. Charge inflows is minus q. Any doubt? So electric field is what? 1 by 4 pi r square minus 1 this. Okay? So negative of e dot dr integral is the potential difference. Okay? R goes from where to where? A to B. A to B. Okay? We'll see that you get the same answer. 1 by R square integral is minus 1 by R. So when you put limit, 1 by B minus 1 by A. Fine? Same thing you get? As potential difference and after that everything is similar. Fine? So we have found out this critical capacitance. Okay? Okay, what if you have just one spherical surface? Can this 
also has a capacitance. Suppose A is a radius. Can I find the capacity of this? Where is the second surface? Where is the second surface? Infinity. R is infinity. Okay? So even a single sphere can be treated like a capacitor. Then what will happen? This derivation which you did, 1 by A minus 1 by B, you can say that B tends to infinity, so your capacitance will become just 4 pi epsilon naught into A, where A is the radius. Okay? A single sphere can also be treated like a capacitor. Any doubt? Okay? Now let's take up the cylindrical capacitor. How this cylindrical capacitor would be? Any idea? Any guesses? Two cylinders, common axis, okay, fine.
something? Let's be narrow. 
types of connections that are neither series nor parallel. Okay? So don't keep that thing in your head that only series and parallel are possible. And whenever somebody asks you what is the equivalent cap capacitance or equivalent resistance, you start finding which one series, which one parallel. It may be neither. Fine? But here, why are we studying series or parallel? Because there is something special about it. Okay? They can be treated as if the special type of arrangement. So that is why we study series connection separately and parallel connection separately. But then there are infinitely many other types. Fine? But we cannot name them because there is nothing special about them. They are generic. Alright? So first we will see how we can cater to series combination of the of the capacitor. Spectrum series combination.
charges on each capacitors will be same. In the series combination of the capacitor, charges on each capacitor will be same. Will be same. Okay? And and positive surface of one capacitor will be connected to negative surface of the next capacitor. Fine? Positive of one will be connected to negative of the other. Is this series of parallel? So now they are no binary. It's not an If if you measure between these two points, it is series. Okay. As, as if you connect a battery like this, it is series. But if you measure between these two points, it is parallel. How these two points is parallel? Whatever is the potential over here, same is the potential over there. So if this is plus Q, this has to be plus Q. Or plus Q1, plus Q1. Positive plate facing positive plate. Negative plate facing negative plate. If you connect a battery over here, both the capacitors will have same potential or not? Right? But if you connect a battery over here, then it will be a series. Fine. So whenever you have to check whether it is series or parallel, first you need to ask yourself about which two points. Same combination can be treated like parallel about two points, can be treated like a series about other two points. Okay? Fine. So this is the situation. Tell me how much is the charge given by the battery? Q. Q charge is given from here. Yes or no? So if I say that this is equivalent to a single capacitor. If this is equivalent to single capacitance of C equivalent. Okay? Then should battery know that something is changed? Should battery get to know? No. If battery get to know that this change, you can't say that it is equivalent. Battery should be unaware that nothing has happened. So what should be the case? Here also it should give the same charge, Q. Battery function is to create potential difference across these two points and give charge, nothing else. So whatever charge was given here should be the charge given here as well. So how much charge will be here? Plus Q and minus Q. Okay, so even the equivalent of the series capacitor will have the same charge. Are you getting it? All these three capacitors have the same charge and even the equivalent capacitor also has the same charge. Okay, fine. It's not that plus 3Q is stored over here. Okay, it is Q only which was given by the battery. Getting the point? Okay, now can you find C equivalent in terms of C1, C2, C3? Yes. Logically arrive.
point and that point. This is how much. This potential field is what? Q divided by C by C. That is how the definition of capacitance. Q is equal to C V, na? So potential difference over here is Q divided by C1 over there it is what? Q divided by C2 This is Q divided by C3 So total potential difference will be Q by C1 Q by C2 plus Q by C3 This should be equal to V Yes or no? Sum of all the potential difference will be total potential difference Right? And same is over here. So, can I write V in terms of Q and C current? Yeah. How much? Q by C current. This is equal to Q by C equivalent. So, Q get cancelled away. So, you will get 1 by C equivalent is equal to 1 by C1 plus 1 by C2 plus 1 by C2. Okay. So, parallel, parallel equivalence of capacitance is similar to the so the series equivalent of capacitance is equal to the parallel equivalence of the resistance. The formula of this. Similar to spring. Okay? Understood?
between this circuit and that one. Find the same circuit. Okay, so they are the parallel combination. Now, I am saying that this is equivalent to a single capacitor. Connected across potential field. Let's say this is C equivalent. Okay? Who should not know? Battery should not know something is changed. Okay? So, let's say on C1 charge is Q1, on C2 charge is Q2, and on C3 it is Q3. How much charge battery should supply? Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3. Right? So, over here, Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 charge is supplied. The same charge will be given here also Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3. Yes or no? Right? Can I write Q1 in terms of C1 and V? What is Q1 equals to? C1 V. Q2 is C2 V. Q3 is C3 V. Simple. Okay, so Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 is equal to C1V plus C2V plus C3V. Basically what I am doing in series and parallel combination is that I am connecting this circuit with that circuit. What is the connecting point? Total number of charge. Okay, in earlier case what is the connecting point? Total potential difference. So I am connecting these two circuits, then only I can write this. Okay? So this should be equal to what? C equivalent into V. So C equivalent becomes what? C1 plus C2 plus C3. Okay? Fine. So in parallel combination, the capacitance is more than the largest or larger than the largest capacitance. Capacity increases.